What up? Welcome to Goodwood. This is an outdoor bench I designed, and here is what the top's gonna this look like. This ash strip in the middle is gonna be the lower level, slightly lower, maybe an eighth inch, a lower level than the oak outside. And I'm gonna have a piece up here. I'm gonna kind of make a false breadboard end here with this ash inlaid. Here I am ripping the tenon on the ash inlay that's gonna go in between those two pieces of oak. That's a shoulder plane. Trimming it up, trimming out the waist that needs removed anyway. Cutting it to length. And using the router to shape that right here. Just gotta take your time. Transferring the pattern. Now we'll get it dead accurate. I love that sound. That's a carving gouge. These things are expensive. I don't recommend you buy a bunch of them, but you need a few of them. That's a $50 tool, just that little chisel. Clean up with sandpaper. The light washes out here. There we go. Back to the shoulder plane. Now here's the groove on the oak that'll correspond on the bench. I need this bench because my friends and I are sitting on piles of wood out on my porch. It won't do. Now we're sitting on a beautiful pile of wood. <laughs> One bench. <laughs> so, it gets kind of crowded. I think I'm a little buzzed here. I came back from a pool party. That's why I'd swim trunks on. But I'm transferring the pattern to the oak breadboard end, false breadboard end right here. And here I am acting like Federica Fellini <laughs> with the camera. Putting my bit in and having at it. And I think I changed my mind here about halfway through because I realized, oh, I got to remove about an inch of material with this one little router bit and it's not worth it. It's just too much work. So yeah, flip it up on end and cut it with the dovetail saw. Just cutting grooves and then I switch to a coping saw here in a second. But bam Now we're rocking and rolling. Look at those sections just popping out. Flipped it around and adjusted my saw. Hit it with the rasp. Get it tuned in. That's six hours of video for this project. Six hours. It took me about 60 to make this bench because I went a little crazy. I went a little way too fancy for an outdoor bench, but everyone that sees it's like, holy shit, how much would that cost? <laughs> and then they laugh when I tell them. But here, I'm making a tenon on the inlay, and you'll see. As soon as you see the end of this video shot right here, you'll get it. And this is me doing handwork with chisels just because that's how I love to work. When I was in construction, I loved pulling out a chisel. And thankfully in furniture making, you get to do that a lot. You get to pull, look at that, look at that shape. Ash is a hardwood, oak's a hardwood. But when you got sharp steel, wood is no match. Now see, I do that on all four corners of the board. And here I'm making the mortises, and I'm making a smiley face. That will be the mortise that the tenon on the ash goes into. It'll all come together here, using the center punch, because I. I spent a lot of time on those oak pieces. And that just guides your drill bit in the right place. If you don't center punch it, your bit could walk all over the place and ruin that. That I spent hours making. One of my uh, mentors in furniture making, Benji Reyes, he says do it right the first time. That's how you make good furniture and that's how you make money at it. Do it right the first time. So that's what I try to do on this project, and it really worked out nice. I don't think I had to redo anything. See the fit? Look how good that is. And there's a lot more tuning. And it's such a good fit that I can't even get the thing off. So I had to put a clamp on it and pound it off. That's my homemade square, that little block of wood. And now I'm transferring lines. I'm cutting the tenon. Actually, I'm cutting. This is the 45 degree. See that ash that's inlaid into the oak? It's at a different level than the oak. 
and I did that. It feels good when you sit on it. Now, if this was out in the rain, I wouldn't do that because water would pull there. Right. I got these chamfered down into this. So it goes flat surface, 45 down to this. It's about 3 sixteenths lower than the surrounding oak. Now I got to do these circle parts, half circles. Simple chisel. What a stud. Shaping up the contour to the lower level. It's like having a sunken living room in your house. It's really nice. It, it's a lot of extra work. It just adds a little bit of flair to the building. Here I am still tuning up that that 45 degree chamfer down into the ash and busting out the cabinet scraper. Now I think this next shot is me showing you how I sharpen a cabinet scraper real quick. You gotta draw a burr out. There's actually a cutting edge on that square piece of steel. You draw it out lengthwise and then you turn over the burr like this horizontally and then you get beautiful gossamer shavings like this. Damn! You know how many times I had to learn that? And I still mess it up. Here I am cutting the tabletop. Cutting the edges on the tabletop. That's a, a high angle block plane from China by a brand called Mujing Fang. They make fantastic stuff if you know what you're doing and know how to tune fine hand tools. See, I'm cutting the chamfer with that block plane. It's probably an easier way to do it with the router, but I didn't want to risk taking a power tool. See, I'm also burnishing that edge. I didn't want to risk taking a power tool for that top just right now. So I did it with all hand tools. Now these are the stretchers for underneath the bench. Slice them up on a bandsaw, then shape them up at the bench. Using spoke shaves and chisels and making it pretty, making it feel good to touch. It's the name of the game here, is making it cool. Uh, here I am doing a little bit of uh, Jedi stuff. This is Furniture Jedi. This is the stuff you learn after you mess things up too many times. Uh, like tabletops breaking the legs because they expanded when they got too dry or too wet. Um, so what I'm doing is I'm, I'm inlaying a little dovetail key into the stretchers that I was just shaping. And those are the little keys. And what that those will do is when those stretchers are attached to the tabletop, they'll allow that or the bench top, they'll allow that bench top to expand and contract. And I'll show you later in this video how they work exactly on the bench. I'll flip the bench over, finished product, and show you how I do it. But here's how I make the slots that those little orange dovetail keys go into. They're actually red. Uh, they're called Bloodwood. And they look orange in this video. For See, those handles are orange right there. Those are orange handles, but the the keys are actually red, and I cut them out of blood wood. It's a nice, dense hardwood, I think from the tropics. Mm. But they shape really nice, like here. That's what it looks like. Now, a, a screw will come up through there and hold that and allow the bench top, which is what the screw is screwed into, to move. Got all this white oak right here, and all I did was go through it and figure out the best pieces for the legs here. Here's a very dull Ryoba saw. I just got a new blade in the mail. Uh, this one is dull. It's not cutting like it should. But I powered through and I'm successful. Cutting the legs out. Now, I need thick legs. I have chicken legs on this bench and in real life. I need to glue those legs together, so I need a flat surface. That's why I'm hand planing right here. And look how good that cuts. That's a Lee Nielsen tool. That's probably $300 hand plane. And it's worth it. I got it cheap on eBay. Gluing them up to, to a set. There's two legs right there. Shaping up the legs after they come out of the clamp. I didn't need to show you taking the clamps off. I did not need to show you that.